Welcome back folks. Today we're just going to do another butchery session and I think we might use the old forestry loppers to cut the carcass up. <laughs> These are primo bro. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll chop the the basic bits off and then we'll move forward and I'll show you how to use these lockers to sort the animal out. Well my work has come to a grinding halt because I inadvertently cut through the back stakes to remove them when I really wanted to keep those back stakes on and use these forestry loppers to make chops out of it. So that's a bit of a bugger. Um, you're going to have to wait till I shoot another deer before I can show you how to make chops using your loppers. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to show you how to make spare ribs using a hacksaw. It's pretty easy. You cut down the ribs, make some ribs out of it, but I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty cool. Not many people utilize the venison ribs. They are actually bloody delicious. I know you fellow Canadians and Americans, you like to have a good old rib once in a while, but us Kiwis, for some reason, we don't really eat the ribs. I do. Some other people I know do, but most people chuck them to the dogs or give them to the chickens. So here goes. Delicious deer ribs. First thing you'll need to do is chop down the middle of the brisket using your meat cleaver or a silky saw works quite good for this too or one of those big massive hand saws or you can use a hacksaw but hacksaw takes a bit of time I use the hacksaw to cut down the ribs and then what you want to do is cut down your ribs if I'm making chops I may leave these whole rib pieces on there so you've got a chop that's about this long awesome for parties and barbecues but uh, if I'm doing ribs I'll make them about that long totally up to you guys, personal preference. You may want single little ribs, you may want big long ribs, you may want strips of ribs all joined together like they do in the States. Like I said, total personal preference. Um, you can trim these outside layers of meat too, or you can leave them on. If it's a big animal, I like to trim just a little bit of meat off here, off the brisket, otherwise the ribs end up really, really meaty, which is great if you're making a, a rib roast in a slow cooker but if they're just for the barbecue or the grill these meaty bits eh, not so good but once again totally up to you guys the ball is in your court check this out the little 223 hole I actually shot this deer three times I shot him one in the ass uh, once in the neck and once through the lungs it wasn't very ethical shooting but I got a bit trigger happy from the raft and there was three of them running along the bank and we we're in a gorgy bit so I knew they couldn't run up the bank I had you know couple of magazines full to, to knock one of them over and uh, yeah anyway I'll show you this damage from the 223 very minimal when you're cutting the brisket up just cut through these white bits here, these white bits of cartilage and then cut all the way through so the knife will be able to cut through that cartilage and straight through and you end up with uh, delicious brisket ribs now that we've had the ribs marinating overnight in the fridge in a mixture of sweet chilli sauce, soy sauce, ginger, garlic, salt and pepper, sweet chilli sauce and that's it. Uh, that's just the, the spare ribs as we know it. I've got another rack of ribs, American style, that are cut lengthways. So we're going to see the difference between these ribs, which aren't separated, they're just cut in strips, and these ribs, which are all separated. Um, it's going to be interesting. So these ribs have been marinating, and these ribs, which are in strips, I'm going to use a dry rub on. Now the dry rub is just brown sugar, paprika, cumin, chili powder, a uh, bit of salt and pepper and maybe a little bit of garlic if you want I'll just have to make that right now and then we'll rub it in and we'll chuck them in the oven see what they taste like
you reckon, Charlie? You like that rib? Well, tell me how much you like it. Pretty good. What do you reckon, Jack? Not as tender as we'd like, eh? <laughs> Not as tender as we're thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hot, bro. That'd be that melted sugar. Now go have a nibble, mate. It might actually be too sweet because I think I used way too much sugar in there. A little extra sugar in there. Bit too much sugar? A little, a little extra sugar in there. So maybe we should have those ones for dessert. <laughs> dessert ribs? Mm, Nothing ribs. wrong with dessert ribs though. Have a taste of Chris's ribs, Jack. Tell me what you reckon. Grab one don't of those. Them. Grab one of those. Grab you them. haven't even tasted one of those ones yet. Yes, I have. Oh, you have? Oh. You don't like those ones? You like the other ones, do you? So the verdict is out on tonight's ribs. The old-fashioned spare rib style tend to be a lot more popular. That may be because they are marinated overnight and they're a lot more tender, whereas the classic style ribs with a rub are still fairly tough and I think I completely cocked up the rub recipe and used way too much sugar. I just kind of chucked everything into the bowl. I didn't really go from a recipe. I just uh, made it up from a recipe that I heard was quite good. But I used a lot, far too much brown sugar. Uh, we have to try the American style ribs again, possibly on a barbecue, and we may try marinate them overnight in some kiwi fruit, which breaks down the, uh, the toughness of the meat. Any kind of fruit, uh, the acids in the fruit, the natural acids, break down the meat and make it a lot tender. So we'll try the classic rib style once again, but meanwhile we're going to get stuck into the spare, spare rib style ribs. Uh, we'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned because we will be doing another session on venison ribs in the near future. But how good do these ribs look? <laughs>